hello everyone and welcome to my channel welcome to this sabbath chat and so you know that we're doing the videos all together now and so we have terrific tuesday tactful thursday and the sabbath chat right here in this video so don't go nowhere and try to stay to the end and so you know i usually do you know a couple songs okay so so here we go um, we're going to be surprised as we come closer and closer in our relationship with God. We're going to be surprised in how, um, uh, how well we're doing. So, okay. We have come this far by faith. Remember, there's a war going on for your soul. Don't be fooled. Jesus is the only name given among men where why we could be saved. Choosing before it's too late. And so basically the reason how or why we've come so far because we lean it on the Lord. Remember, there's a word going on for your soul. Don't be fooled. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved. So, okay. So, basically, in the Sabbath chat, I wanted to talk about, like, you know, you may feel like, say, perhaps, like, you stayed in your lifestyle too long. But, however... I am here to tell you that what the Bible says, that all things work together for good of those that love God and that is called according to his purpose. And so basically, what am I saying? Okay. Um, for those of you who do not know, my name is Sheila Rollins and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And on this YouTube, we are the pursuit to Christ. You know, where we basically help people who basically been turned off from God, turned off from Christ, maybe because of some adult not being on their best behavior. Some adults giving them the wrong impression, the false impressions, you know, about God. And so therefore, you know, basically getting them to the point where, you know, we don't want to worship God because of somebody else. Maybe too much church, you know, maybe we have been violated in some kind of way, sexually, verbally, physically, you know, mistreated by a leader or a pastor or a first lady or somebody like that, that we don't want no parts of Christ. But however, this is the thing. Christ has come that we have might have life. If we stay, our life stays the same, then we stay with Satan who has come to kill, steal, and destroy from us or destroy us. Okay. But Christ has come that we might have life. And if you accepted that life, then you know that, you know, as you start to read the Bible and stuff, and you realize that your life is not a waste. It is not a waste. And that basically. There's no time that was better than right now that you would decide to give your life to God and to turn it all over to Christ, okay? And so basically, any changes that needs to be made, he'll prompt you in your heart what you need to do, some things that you need to surrender to him. And you'll enter into a time of learning and unlearning because the Bible says every plant that's not planted by God must come up. OK, and so some of the misconceptions that we've had about his law, you know, what's going to happen at the end time, you know, how we should live, be living our lives, what we should eat, what we should drink, what we should put on, what we can do to our body. A lot of times in the most case, we have been confused. We have been misled about those things. So basically, we enter into a school of learning with Christ. OK, and so. When we come to him and we take hold of that scripture that says that he would give us beauty for ashes, you know, I mean, before I gave my life to Christ, I would be sad. Like when I was away from people and I realized like, you know, I'm in this relationship and we sexing up and all that kind of stuff and I'm feeling shameful, I'm feeling dirty, I'm feeling unhappy. Or, you know, you know, I'm eating these things that, you know, is griping my stomach, you know, um, chitlins and pork and shrimp and stuff like that that is scavengers you know which god does not want us to eat like the bible says that you know if we pray on something it needs to be sanctified by the word in other words it has to be something that god said that we should eat okay and while he allows us freedom of choice he wants us to obey him he says that he lays before us life and death 
choose life that it may be well, not just with us, but with her children also. And so basically when we give, you know, our life to Christ, like if you went to church, if your parents took you to church too much, okay. Um, you know, maybe they were in there like they were so grateful to God, you know, for maybe pulling them up from the miry clay and that they were so happy that they just wanted to be there every time the church doors was open and they wanted their children to have a relationship with God. And so they had you there too, you know, or perhaps that maybe, you know, you were violated by a parent or violated by a leader or something like that. Um, God can use all those things because guess what? Satan don't stop his foolishness. So in other words, once God cleans us up, you know, makes us whole, heal us, you know, get, brings us into the truth and we're practicing the things. We stand as a testimony for God that anybody that's going through like situations that we have, they can be overcomers as well. You know, God is not a respected person. What he has done for me and you, he is willing to do for somebody else, including our children. You know, so basically, you know, nothing is wasted. I mean, everything, case in point. Now, my mother was raised at a time or born at a time where it was a big sin or a big shame for a woman to get pregnant and wasn't married. A lot of times, you know, they would send the girl away, you know, to another city, another state, you know, or something like that. And she would live there until she delivered the baby. And then they would give the baby away, act like it never happened. And the girl would come back and live her life as though she didn't just have a baby. And so in the case, that's what's basically happened to my mom. And so where she was, she, she received, received basically reverse prejudice. So my mother was like light complected, really long, curly hair and all that. And so the people that she was with, like other family members in some cases, you know, was like really dark and stuff like that. And so they mistreated her and, you know, beat her and, you know, for any old reason, things that she didn't do and all that kind of stuff. So basically, you know, that experience, now we're talking about basically things working out for our good. That experience taught my mom, like the village, the village wasn't getting a hold of my mom's kids. And if they did, they wouldn't put their hands on us. Okay. Cause she didn't go for that. And I didn't either, incidentally, especially not men putting their hands on girls. And so anyway, my mom had the ideal that, and I know this was a declaration with her. If I had me some children. Ain't nobody going to touch my children. And I'm going to keep all of my children together no matter what. And as a result, and she had children. She had nine of them. Okay. I'm one of them. I'm, not, I'm right in the middle. I'm number six. I'm the first oldest of the younger kids. But anyway, mom kept all of us together. Yeah, she did was discipline us. She whipped our butts when we needed it and stuff like that. But still, she didn't do it because of hatred. She did it because of love. You know, because this world ain't going to play with us, okay? Um, if we don't discipline our, our children, discipline our children, even though the law says that we shouldn't, we can't, and all that kind of stuff, then they will. They will discipline, throw them in prison, and all kinds of stuff. And so basically, you know, for the most part, parents did what they did, basically to keep us out of prison, out of the system, and that thing. But my point is this. The way things worked for my mother, because she was given away, she kept all of her children. And even though naysayers was like, Dosha, why are you having so many children? Every year, every other year, you having another baby until she had nine. It didn't stop her. She still had kids. Even her mother, you know, stop, don't have so many babies. Her, her, her brother, Dosha, don't have so many babies. But she didn't listen to him. You know, she was the only girl of her with her three brothers and she wanted some some daughters, but she wanted some sons, too. And she had seven girls. OK, and so she was just as happy as she could be. Did we have everything we needed? No, no, nobody did. Not even you. OK, I mean, because if we have everything we need, there's no reason to reach for God. So the whole idea of what we experience you know, and what parents didn't do, you know, things that they showed us that wasn't right. Jesus is our example. Not our parents, okay? Not our mother, not, not a teacher. And all. No, 
only Jesus is our example. It is only Jesus that God looked down from heaven in his own voice and said, this is my beloved son in who I am, am well pleased. Here he am. It was only Jesus. No place else does that say that about anybody. So let us let our parents off the hook and forgive them and you know not let it be an excuse for us not taking up a responsibility of ourselves and being our own parents and let us see how well we do we're not going to be perfect either so like i said let us take our parents up the hook let us you know ask god to help us to forgive you know and to move and to be able to let god use it to give glory to god as you give it to god ask him to come into it and to help you, you know, and like I said, and, well, to help us because I'm in it too, you know, to help us so that he can give us beauty for ashes, like he said, you know, so that we can have the abundant life in spite of us. And then when we tell our story, people going to say, did that, did that really happen or are they just lying? Okay. So that's basically all I have for you. Okay. So let us remember there's a war going on for your soul. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved. Choosing before it's too late. I love you. I'll see you in the next YouTube. Remember to subscribe, comment, share, like. If you haven't already encouraged subscription, you know, do all those good things for me. I love you. Check out my other YouTube, okay? Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous. Check that out too as well. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.